so much. Jerks. Given words. Because I know you won't be able to be quiet the whole time, so we'll let you start. Well, it's an intimate setting as it is, so. Yeah. I believe you know everybody already. So, I do. I do. Uh, we, we brought Betty out here to uh, do a board training to kind of help identify any questions, you know, basic thoughts of uh, board principles. And so feel free to ask anything of Betty <laughs> that you would like at this point. And uh, yeah, I think we're okay to get started. And we'll yes, pizza is during the presentation. So yes, no we, worries. Yes, we will have lunch. What, so. what time did I order that? <laughs> Eleven. Sure. sure. Have them deliver it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, all right. Well, truly, if you guys have questions or comments as we go along, just call or shout. We can totally go off this if you want to. It's, it's really what you guys need to want and where you want to be. So. Okay, so today we're going to talk about community foundation and kind of more about what your role is and the overall community foundation. Um, I work with quite a few community foundations and probably the one thing I know is that most of the board members really don't know how to talk about community foundations and really how to tell the story and that's kind of I think a lot what I'll focus on today but it's more just kind of how you can help the staff do what they try to do and, and be a good board member as well. So what does a community foundation do? Um, a lot of people are very giving and they want to give back, they want to be philanthropic, but they really don't even know what that means or how to do it or how to go about it. And the community foundation is really here to be that, that organization that people can help their community, whatever, however they want to do that. The community foundation is kind of that venue, that, that tool, that, that organization that helps them. And some people go, but well, aren't you competing with all the other nonprofits in town? No. Community foundations are here to help and support the other, the other nonprofits in town. They're not here to compete, they're here to be a partner, to collaborate with them, to help them fundraise and, and, and hold their long-term funds. They're probably, and I know Ryan will agree with me, most of them do not get into helping them specifically with fundraising events or those kinds of things, but they can still help them with some of the bigger long-term gifts or bigger projects. So they're here to, to help them, not to compete. And that, that's all nonprofits in the community and in the area, not just um, some of them. We have a lot of churches that are working with community foundations. Uh, we've got a lot of good clergy out there, but they know nothing about fundraising and know nothing about how to hold some of those funds. So a lot of community foundations, and I know you guys have done a little bit with that, are working with the local churches to help kind of handle and manage and keep some of their funds local as well. So as a board member, you've um, kind of got different rules and this is one I always like to come back to. You can be the ambassador, you can be somebody that goes out and the ambassador is somebody that just goes, tells the story, really talks good positive things about it, really kind of in the community as a cheerleader. Um, the asker is the one that really gets into the fundraising part and really wants to get involved in the development committee and going out and soliciting and closing and bringing gifts and really talking to people about leaving assets of some sort to the community foundation. And the advocate is kind of the one that goes out and, and thanks stewards and also kind of cheerleads a little bit, but they're really here to kind of um, just say, you know, we're here, we've got people that can help, come talk to us, Those, that kind of role. And every board member should try to play some active role besides just coming to board members. So as a board member, um, you've got to support the organization financially. You've got to make a gift of some size. It doesn't have to be the largest, it doesn't have to be the biggest, but it's, as a board member, it's important for you to do that. Um, donors are savvy these days, and a lot, of board, uh, a lot of donors will go, does your board support the organization financially? Um, as you get ready to apply for grants and proposals and go for money outside the community, that's one of the key questions the, the corporations and the foundations are, does your board support the organization financially? And if you don't say yes, um, you're in the trash can immediately. Um, confidentiality is important. You guys will, will as, as you've been on the board, you'll know you get a lot of information, a lot of insight on people and their assets and kind of activities and potential gifts and, and what could and might happen. So that confidentiality piece is quite important. Um, really, and that those last ones are really about just giving help support, going out and helping people, talk to people, let them know that we're here. A lot of people don't even know what the community foundation is. They don't know what, who should be participating. They think it's only for people with lots and lots of money. They don't realize that a lot of gifts are not that large to community foundations. They can be very small and very minor, but they all add up. But if, you know, we all love, love, love the big gifts, but we also love, love, love the small gifts. Because, um, you know, small gifts can make a big difference for an organization or a project. So more about what your job really. Um, talk about what you do. 
Um, talk about why you're involved. Talk about why you're, in, you're why you're engaged. Talk about why you're on the board. Let people know that. Yeah, I would have been here earlier today, but I was at a board training for the um, community foundation because I sit on the board. Talk about your role and your involvement, and people will go, well, exactly what is that? You know, and then that's that opportunity you can just kind of start talking about it and bring it up. Because the more people know and understand community foundations, they like them and they support them and they get them. But too many people don't know. I mean, what did you guys know about the community foundation before you came on board? Much? Yeah. I mean, Says money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else that wants more money. Yeah. But we need to make sure we're letting them. Um, part of your job, too, is to govern and to oversee and to work and support the staff, but not to micromanage. You've got good staff hired, so you need to give them plans, directions, and support them and help out when they ask you to. Uh, you don't need to worry about day-to-day -day operations. That's what they do. Your job is really is to set that vision, that mission, and that purpose, that long-term focus, and let them handle the weedy stuff for the most part. Um, so that, that helps, I think, a lot, too. Um, actively participate in board and committee meetings and when you say you're going to be there, be there, be prepared, be ready. Um, and I always like to say be on board, not be on the board. Mm -hmm. You know, be supportive of what they're doing, agree with it. You know, you might not agree with exactly what they're doing, but if you're the board and the board voted to go with it, you know, it's, it's your job as a board member to, to agree to go forward with that. Um, as you get out and you talk to people and you get some leads or you get somebody that might be interested, you know, get back to the office staff and let them know. That, that you've got somebody or they need to go talk to them or how you can participate in that. Um, it's your job to lead the organization stronger than when you started. So really look at where the organization was when you came on the board as a board member and how are you as a board member going to make that organization stronger? What's your legacy to the board? What's your commitment? What do you want to see accomplished while you're on the board? And really think about that and then work with the staff and the board to make that happen. But um, As a board member, you're kind of the steward, the gatekeeper. And it's your job to make sure that, that when your term rolls off, um, or terms, depending if you stick around a little bit longer, um, that you're stronger and in a better position, uh, both in planning and programming and, and in dollars. Questions or comments? Anybody? Chime in, anybody. Don't be shy. <laughs> Don't be shy. So as you think about the community foundation and why people, why, why local people, why community people would support it and participate, um, helps make their dreams reality. I have done and, and talked with a lot of donors. I fundraised for K-State for years and, and with other nonprofits prior to that. Um, but a lot of people have ideas of what they'd like to see happen or what they, they would think could happen or maybe have dreams of, of, wow, if we only had this in our community, but they have no idea how to make that happen. And those are some of the funnest donor conversations I think I've ever had is when you just say, wow, if you had X number of dollars, what would you do in your community? What would you like your community to have? And, and just let them think and dream and then go, well, you know, let's sit down and kind of brainstorm how we can make that happen. The community foundation can help us. Let's figure out how we can make that happen. You know, uh, Ron and I were talking before you guys came in about Lane County and they're wanting to put public bathrooms in a shower in their park. You know, they've been talking about that for how long? Six months now. Yeah, but they're putting a plan in action. They're going to make that happen. Because somebody finally said, "Okay, this is stupid. This is something we need." Mm -hmm. Other people have those thoughts, ideas. Community foundation can make those happen. Uh, we talked about collaborating and being cooperative and working with others. Um, and, and your community foundation does an outstanding job of really being very broad and very diverse in what they do, what they're willing to do. Um, some of them have kind of a narrow focus and really want to handle certain things and not handle other things. Uh, you're blessed with Ryan's leadership that, that you guys are really doing a lot of wide, community-wide, and, and a lot of diverse projects. Um, no, well, I think that has a lot to do with the community, um, yeah. the size. Yeah. The smaller the community, the more, I think, foundations kind of have to get involved in. Yeah. Um, but I think that's an asset. I think that's a no, plus. It, you know, like we don't have a city planner or a county planner. Yeah. You know, we have to take the ball and go with it, and that's kind of part of our role is helping out the public entities and doing the planning and the visioning and, and helping out because a lot of that has to do with donors too. So. Yeah, it takes both the private and the, the federal and the state dollars, the government dollars. To but I have noticed that you always present things, Ryan, and all of you, like you're excited about every project, and I like that. Because I, in my heart, I think, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we doing this? Yeah. Yeah. I just appreciate the fact that you always present it with excitement and with, you know, and I appreciate that. Because 
truthfully, one person's goals and, and ideas and dreams aren't another person's. Yeah. And, but I feel like you guys do a great job at taking someone else's dream and, like you said, at least be on board with it. Yeah. And, and yeah. You don't have to be involved involved in it, but at least mm -hmm. you're supporting it by the public. Yes. yes. I appreciate Buffalo that. Buffalo fence does not excite you, Tracy. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you know, that's what I say. And in a small community, everyone needs to feel like you're on their side. Yeah. It really, yeah. they do. Well, that's what grows your community is uh -huh. having those diverse things. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know how many times. Well, even I was in Manhattan when they were doing the whole downtown development project, you know. Yeah. And that was so controversial and was such a hot topic in town. And people fought it and fought it. Mm -hmm. But when you really understood the how and why of what was going on, it all made sense. Right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, afterwards, yeah. you know, people are like, wow, we can't imagine Manhattan without all that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we, some of us could because we lived through some of that. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, sometimes you just have to see it and realize, okay, that, that, that's a good idea. Um, think, as a board member, your job is to plan for today, but also tomorrow. Um, you know, and, and that's really, when you look at community foundations, they're here to plan for the future and make sure Scott City is always the dynamic community it is that it is today and in the future. So many of our communities are not doing that well, um, and that's, that's important. Uh, retaining those assets in your community, and Ron and I were talking about that too earlier before you guys came in. You guys are doing that well. I, I'm sure you've talked transfer of wealth numbers, so I wasn't going to go there today. No, not for a while. We haven't. Oh, okay. had that. Well, we actually that haven't in. had that discussion just because. Well, the last time I looked at the TOW numbers, I think a lot of them. The the ag the ag community and the economics of the ags has kind yeah. of gone skewed, up and down. So yeah, it yeah. skewed kind of probably some of the wealth and the land valuation. Yeah, because it was done the last few years ago when it was done. The values were a lot higher. Land values mm -hmm. were a lot higher a few years ago, and I know they're dropping now. Out here. Yeah, and we just got a valuation done on uh, a couple quarters of land we have, and it's down 25% from what it's it was in 2014. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was hearing now further south too. Um, that's about what they're doing. So, so we won't talk transfer of wealth out here because you guys know those. That's probably but but keeping those assets. Um, we talk a lot with community foundations about how if we don't keep those assets, those monies are going to leave. We know that kids that that aren't staying here, that have family here, that are living in Lawrence or Kansas City mm -hmm. or Denver will come and grab those assets and take them out if, if they don't have a connection and a purpose here. Mm -hmm. So community foundations have done a great job of keeping some of those local. <clears throat> so it's really all about relationships and community relationships, and that's really what you want to do. You've got to have trust. The community that knows about you has to know who you are. What you don't want to be is that bad story in the newspaper where they you bumbled something up and screwed it up and nobody trusts you anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we've all seen that happen and, and hope to God you guys don't, don't do that. Um, raising awareness and visibility is important. There's always people to talk to and let them know who you are and clarify a little bit more who you are, what you do, and why you do what you do. Um, there are always new people coming in or new people. You know how it is with information. You get information and you hear it, but it doesn't really sink in. And then about a year later you mm -hmm. go, wow, I remember hearing something about that, but at the time it didn't connect. Today it does. So there's always people out there that are needing that. But it's really all, all about networks, partnership, and capacity building. And when you think about it, that's kind of what our whole world is, whether we're in business or whether we're just trying to get anything done, even with, with our children sometimes. It's just about building networks and um, partnerships and, and getting things to happen. And, and that's community foundations and you as a board, that's your role, is kind of be that catalyst to really make things happen. So growing your community foundation is important. Um, if you want to save your community, if you want to keep your community, you've got to go. You've got to keep growing your community foundation as you go forward. Um, you need projects. You need ideas. You need, a, you need things to be working on. Um, I, I work with some community foundations and they really have nothing to do. I mean, they have mm -hmm. no projects. They're just trying to grow their, their Sorry, foundation base, <laughs> but they don't have any projects or anything going on. And I know sometimes you guys probably think, oh my God, we're doing too much, but better that than than doing nothing and being a, you know, kind of a useless organization and just waiting for things to come your way. Um, I think it's better that you guys are in the position you're in, you're out being that catalyst and you're, you're driving and you're really kind of pushing things and I think that's the way it should be. Um, as you grow your foundation, it provides for your replacements down the road. <laughs> and I know you all have term limits and that people roll off and come on, but um, you do want to always be keeping that pipeline full of, of potential board members and, and future volunteers for projects. Keep in mind that as you work on all these projects, it doesn't have to be just the board. Non-board members can serve on committees and task force and ad hoc groups, um, and that's a good idea to keep doing that. 
um, especially like your program dollars when you're awarding those it's good to bring others in to be a part of that that program granting process uh, do you guys do that right or is yeah. it just board as far as the grants and the grant the granting cycles yeah i mean we do it on, on our end yes yeah but we do have just volunteers on all of our boards, just community yes. people, yeah, not separate. just board yeah. members. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think that's good. Mm -hmm. I mean, here again, it helps tell that story. It helps get more people involved. It helps them recognize the needs and wants in the community. Mm -hmm. Here again, some people have no idea of some of the, the true social service agency needs. And well, needs in our board, right. actually, Lori Krause just was the last board member when I started, so we've done a full. Oh, wow. Wow. We we're now it's every now board. every board member from the time I've started is now new. Oh great! And so, but we've done a good that job. That tells me you've been here a long time, right? Huh? Mm -hmm. Well, that but you were on the scholarship committee mm -hmm. before. Like Tracy was on the scholarship committee before she joined our yeah. actual board. And so, one of the things we've all worked on as far as staff and everything is making sure we have good people on our committees. Yes. So and it just makes it easier to make choices for board over. and transitions yeah. for board members yeah. you know you have a known quantity yep. you know what you got when you got her <laughs> <laughs> they're i don't know why <laughs> <laughs> uh, the big reason you really want to grow your community though is to your foundation is to grow your community yeah. and to grow your county and to really make it that up. say we've all seen the counties and the communities that are really struggling and, and you know Across the state, people look at Scott County out here and they go, Scott County's a leader and they're doing things. I mean, I hear that well, all no. the time on the other side of the state as I go to state meetings. And, and we've started doing the impact action. investing too. We just uh, recently loaned money to start a drug and alcohol facility here. Oh, we're, we're, we just finished up. We did the loan for the Hope's Closet, the Goodwill store oh, across the street. I saw that when we drove by. Yeah. And yeah, we're, so we're actually doing more of the loaning now. Um, um, getting involved in that because it, it it's good to have the money you know sitting there in an endowment and doing all this stuff but if you can actually do stuff and promote growth that's yeah, our board has done a very good job of making sure that we're getting the money back there where it needs to be to help build and grow so. yeah. mm -hmm. and that's the difference that's the leadership and that's where you're really coming through and doing an ideal to really help the community in every facet um, as I say, and as I work with other communities and foundations and, and other nonprofits, you guys do probably do the best job of that of several, you know, of, of most of them in the state. I don't know anybody that's really doing quite as well as you guys do across the board in, in different areas of local community foundation. Some some of them do pieces. You guys do the pretty much complete package. So kudos to you guys for, for that and your staff for making that happen. Um, to be successful, you need that, that mission and that vision. And, and I know there's nothing worse than sitting there and putting those things together. I, mean, I get that. But it really does make a difference. It's a good process. It's a good board building process to kind of look at that and go, is this really who we are? Is this really what we want? You know, and, and I say, I, I, I've led those discussions and I've sat through those discussions on both sides. But they really are, at the end of the day, it's, it's always good when you walk away and go, okay, we didn't change it, but we all, we all still agree. Or, you know, we tweaked it a little bit and now I feel like it really fits us as our board and the people that we have on the board. So, you know, that, that is a good process. Um, having that strategic plan, and I'm not a big one planning for, for decades and years out. I think if you have, you know, kind of know where you're going for a, a good 18 months, have a vision and a, a plan out there for three years, and maybe even really lightly penciled in for five, but kind of go, okay, in the next three years, what do we kind of want to look like and what do we want to be doing and where do we want to grow and expand and what, what would we like to see our, our donor base look like? What would we like to see, uh, you know, our, our assets be? But, you know, at least have 12, 18 months pretty solid of kind of where you want to go and what needs to be accomplished. Um, I'm a big believer in those goals and having it kind of written out so everybody understands. Um, I think it's hard when you sit and you verbalize and people all think you're on the same page, but when it's in writing, it's that everybody really kind of knows where you're going, what you're doing. Um, to be successful, too, you need a good board. And it takes time and patience. But, uh, fundraising for the community foundations is not as quick as it is for other nonprofits and other projects. You know, with community foundation gifts, people are usually giving large gifts or they're giving estate gifts, and it's a much slower process to get some of those. Now, if you're doing little community projects, people will hop for those a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. But when you're really looking about the long term, the bigger gifts, the estate gifts, that's that's where your time and patience. And sometimes even on other projects, it takes quite a bit of time and patience to, to get people coming to that one. Um, I talk a little bit about the case statement. 
And the case statement, and I'll talk more about that here in just a little bit, but the case statement really is just a document. So if you've got a project like the FINS you're working on, it's just really kind of saying the who, the why, the what, and the where, and why are we doing this. You know, and it's, it's that document that kind of clarifies to everybody and kind of helps people get on board exactly what is the project, why are we doing it, what's it going to cost, what's the timeline, why is it important. And it just makes you kind of, helps you, it, it's a good public document, but it helps you as a board figure out to really go, okay, we looked at everything, the good, the bad, the pros, the cons, and we've got this kind of spelled out. So we have a good idea of, of why we're doing it and, and everybody understands. Some internal questions to think about is what does our community foundation do? And, and everybody on the board should have a pretty good handle on that. Mm -hmm. You want me to ask you guys that? What yours does? <laughs> do you want to say answer? <laughs> <laughs> well, just think about it. Oh, oh, yeah. Since yeah. the camera's on, we won't make yeah. you answer for everybody else. We, we'll make them think of their own answers. So. But what does our community foundation do and why is it important to the community? And as a board member, kind of think about that because that should help you guide your direction and your input, your, your, what, why you think it's important. Mm -hmm. um, who would fill the void if you guys weren't here? What would Scott City be if, if Community Foundation wasn't started, what, almost 20 years ago now? 17? Yeah, 17? we're 17, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, because yeah. before that, we were the hospital foundation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but, but think of where Scott County might or might not be if the Community Foundation were here and some of the projects that they've done over these last, mm -hmm. you know, 15 years plus. Um, a lot different, a lot different, because who would have taken that leadership? Yeah, because next year is a 30 year, so I was thinking in my head, 30 years would be the healthcare foundation start. Oh, okay. Are so, you doing anything big for that? I've been thinking about it. I just, I didn't know. With with the healthcare foundation recently folding again, <laughs> yes. um, it's kind of maybe a sore kind of subject, but um, so yeah, I don't know. It's kind of one of those deals where I think it's probably just best if we leave it as a community foundation and celebrate 20 years. In yeah, years. celebrate okay. 20 yeah. In three years. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Yeah. Well, at least you thought about it. I mean, you know, you didn't just blow it off and go. No. Okay. Well, we were going to acknowledge, but yeah. Um, what will the community look like when we fulfill our mission? What else do you need to do? What else does the community need? What else does the community want over the next three to five years? What else would help your community? What's missing right now? I'll let you guys answer that. What's missing? <laughs> the wellness center. That's well, yeah. The wellness center. Yeah. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's the big issue. That's the one. Yeah. That's been out there for a long time. Yeah. What What all would be in that? Gyms. Uh, workout areas. Play swimming pool. Different people walking track. Um, yeah. Locker rooms, lock, yeah, gyms. Just the workout areas. area that the school and the public can use and things yeah. like that. Yep. We need that. Yeah. We well, it would be an economic yeah. development piece, too, I would think, wouldn't it? Sure. It would bring people in and draw people into the community. If you know, uh -huh. yeah. 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 Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think of the community in um, Central Kansas, the Community Foundation, they, were, they wanted a swimming pool. So the community foundation helped put an indoor swimming pool in, and uh, they were smart enough to make it competitive size. So now they're now hosting swim tournaments yeah. in several times during the year, as well as some of the state tournaments for the smaller schools. So it's a big economic boom for them, you know. And they didn't initially think of it that way. It was, you know, kind of like you guys were thinking, a good little project for the community. But somebody had a little bit more vision and foresight and now it's turned out and its location is perfect so mm -hmm. you know, and where is that in Great Bend where is no that? it's in Marion County oh Marion County further east okay. yeah further east um, yeah it's over there a little bit further but yeah it's turned into a real a really good and the community gets to use it as well so. mm -hmm. anything besides the wellness center is that it for now for a while that's the baby daycare Mm -hmm. Yeah, housing. Buffalo fence. <laughs> What'd you it's say? Big Buffalo fence. <laughs> yeah, that daycare is a big one everywhere. Mm -hmm. That one's a big one everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I'm not quite sure what the solutions are. And housing, you know, you think, I'm like, everybody keeps, the eastern part of the state is so funny. And, and having lived out this way, it's kind of funny to me. But, but they totally don't understand why western Kansas could have a housing shortage. There's like, there's nobody that lives out there. Why could there, there's nothing to do. Why is there a housing shortage? So, 
like, you know, you guys didn't really need to come out and see what happens out there. You'd be remarkably surprised. But oh, we've got a good start on that. Yeah. I mean, we, they've got some yeah. plants. Well, that's awesome. For housing? Yeah. Different levels of housing? Well, that's the other thing I keep hearing on housing is not just low income, it's, all, it's up and down the ranges, and it's mm -hmm. the medium priced housing that's really the shortest, more so than yeah. low and high. It's mm -hmm. that medium, getting young professionals to come back mm -hmm. in housing that they can afford and, and you know, live in and, and do some, some living with. So. Um, think about what guides your decisions as a board member individually and as a group. What decides, you know, what guides those decisions? Are we effective and efficient at what we do? Are, are we doing the best we can do with what we have? Could we be more effective? Could we be more efficient? Are there some things we could or should be doing differently as a community foundation? Um, think about what you've accomplished. You know, we're talking about 17 years, but, but think about it. You know, Ryan, you've been here for how many years? Uh, I'll be 10 next March. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to look back at those 10 years and go, gosh, what have we done over the last 10 years? And then be really exhausted. But, but I think one of the things we don't do is we don't, we don't celebrate our accomplishments enough. We kind of roll on pretty quickly and we don't really stop back and look at the last year or two years or five or ten years. And those celebrations are important because they kind of force us to do that. But I think we need to do them probably more often than the big, the big anniversary dates and really go, wow. wow. And, and, you know, let the county know. Let the community know what you've accomplished. You know, a lot of times we hear again, we do those reports, we do them internally, and I know Ryan comes every month with a board report of what's gone on, but, you know, sometimes you have to take those reports and, and just kind of let the public really know, you know, this is what we've been doing. This is this is the money we've been pumping back into the community over the last two years. This we actually are going to, we, we started this annually now. We actually put our financial, um, statement of financial. We, put it, we put it in the newspaper so that the whole public can see Good. what the money they have. Good. And you talk about things you did, the projects, and who you funded, and yeah, we do. I think we've done a pretty good job. Uh, we've actually expanded more. We're having Julie and Brindley, we do more radio stuff now. We oh, do. Uh, we we've gotten more involved into the video, and we're starting to branch out from just the video. Uh, <laughs> from just newspaper stuff. We're doing more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Social media. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, Snapchat and Twitter and it's, Snicker and Flivver and whatever those other things are. <laughs> yeah. I got asked to join something the other day by my child and I was like, Nick, you're going to have to explain to me why I would do this and what it is and exactly <laughs> what I'm agreeing to do. No idea even what it was. Flav favor? Flavor? I don't know what it was even. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Still trying to figure out Facebook half the time. But, <laughs> But we do need to be, and that being transparent is important. Um, donors want transparency. They want to know where your money is, what it's being done, how it's being invested, what you're giving back, and what, what, you're, uh, what you're doing with the money. That transparency, and I'm glad to hear you guys are putting that out there. But talk also about how you're spending the money you're spending as well. Make sure you're not just putting assets out. Because some community foundations, and especially the larger ones, are kind of starting to get a bad rap that they're sitting there building assets and they're not putting them back into the community. So it's important to let the community know that you know we've done this, this, and this. Um, but we're hearing that in especially some of the metro areas, they're not they're not spending; they're just endowment building. And donors are donors and, and community are getting a little distraught for that. So think about why you work and or why you volunteer for the community foundation. Why why did you say yes when they asked you to step up? I just think it's a great organization for Scott City. And yeah. I'm a Scott City person, and and yeah. they just support every really every facet of what yeah, Scott City is. It was an easy decision. Mm -hmm. Same. Same. Yeah. Just see the, see the community grow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, think about how you've changed in the last five or ten years. What are you doing today that you didn't do five years ago? Right? Well, ten a lot years, different. Nine years ago when I started, we were sitting in the top. I was sitting by myself in the top of the courthouse <laughs> with, with three file, with one file folder thing, and like I think we had like thirty funds, and yeah. we had like I think two and a half, three million dollars when I started, and then yeah. now it's a hundred and how many funds? Mm -hmm. Pam knows. One hundred twenty. One hundred twenty wow. funds. You know. Eight and a half million dollars, and now three staff, and yeah. you look. You're it, still on the top of the courthouse. No, no, no that's right. You moved. We're that's right. Over. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, we have our <laughs> own building. come over and see. I didn't know that. I forgot that. No, it's just. And you think about all the projects we've done, and how much money we've raised, and helped the community out. Yeah, because your assets are at eight plus, but how much money did we just flow through money 
that Oh, just in the last five up. years, at least $6 million. Yeah, I mean, increased. so that's an important story to tell, too. It's not that you have $8 million, but you've also mm -hmm. put $6 million back into the community. That's, yeah. that's pretty impressive. In years, we had eight, eight, over $8 million. That's what you guys figured out. Mm -hmm. community. Yeah, total, we've given away over at least $8 million, So I mean, that's pretty impressive. Because what's the population out here, about 5,000? 3,800 in Scott City, 5,000. You start thinking per capita of what you pump back into the community, that's some pretty powerful numbers. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a strong story to tell about why you're here and what you're doing. Uh, are we functioning for today's world? Are we adapting? We're in an ever-changing world. We've got to be um, attuned and aware of that, and, and not just in what we're doing, but also in the community and the county needs and, and what projects and activities we should be working on. Um, I know you're working on things today that probably five, ten years ago the foundation I never even would have thought about. You know, the impact um, investing, those kinds of things. That's something that five or ten years ago community foundations were petrified to do, and some of them still are. Um, oh yeah, I mean, just going to the national conference last year, everybody's like, "Oh, how do we do this? There's no way." And you know, it's such it's such a it's such a risk, and it's like, well, you know, it's a risk if you don't do those things in your community. That but isn't it a risk? But with the stock market too. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, when you think about it, is the risk. Too much different? Yeah. No. You never know. You, you get you those monthly statements and you can lose $100,000 and not even, yeah. you know. And not have anything. At least now you have a drug rehab facility that, you know, yeah. is helping people and giving back. So, yeah. Are we listening to our constituencies? Are we hearing and we listening? Are we, in our, are we in our community enough that we know what the needs and wants are? You know, here again, it's not just our projects and what we want to do, but what does the community you know, what's their drive, what's their push, or, and we got to be constant out there making sure that we're adapting. I think that's another key thing is really to just be listening and being adaptive mm -hmm. and being willing to at least kick it around and kick the tires on it and go, okay, yay or nay. And it's okay to say nay. I mean, I don't, you know, I think that's a, that's a good decision sometimes, but I think you at least have to have the conversations and take the time not to get so tied down that you at least don't just mix it right out of the chute. Um, but here again, you guys have always had that more... Um, daring leadership risk-taking role and, and that's part of the, I think the beauty out here in this part of the state that we don't get on the other side of the state is they're so um, locked into the same old same old. Mm -hmm. and, and through my years of coming out to western Kansas that was part of what I always liked was you know that willing to take on projects and do and, and uh, take the risk. Uh, do we have the right leadership? Are we diverse? Do we represent the whole county? Do we have a good mix of people on our board that, that also represent our county? You know, and I don't know what your board makeup looks like right now. Is it six and five? I, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's. I think we have a good balance, and we. Yeah. We and always try to keep it. You know, I think when I started, there was one, two women on the board, three yeah. women, and it was eight guys and. Token women. That was the secretary. Um. <laughs> that dated me, didn't it? Hey, will you be on the board? We need a yeah. secretary. So that's why I was uh, yeah. No, but I think we've done a we've done a very good job of getting good balance as far right. as the gender, but uh, also getting some different you know perspectives and, and different views from yeah. people. And uh, are you county wide background. still? Do you have you have, I know you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Yep. Keep broad, keep a good mix. How are you thought of in the community? Do you get much negative, much people yelling and screaming about why you're doing or why you're not doing? That's good. Yeah. We try to stay out of the political messes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> very smart, very smart. Um, what, what else could you be doing? What else would help you do something else? What, what tools, what knowledge, what insight, what what, networking with other areas. I know going to the National Convention, you know, Brian mentioned that, and that does help to go just kind of network with other board members and see what's going on. Um, I always go to conferences and conventions and come out going, okay, we're better off than those, and thank God we're not over here, because, you know, this group's really messed up. We're doing really good and pretty cool compared to what this group's doing. So I always go to conferences and always gain a lot of ideas and thoughts, but always come back feeling, okay, you know, we're, we're, no. we're pretty solid on some of those issues. So. Well, we actually, we host the Alliance Western Kansas Foundations and we have a meeting and so yeah. all of us get together and we talk about all the yeah. things going on and we, we steal and share ideas and, you know, do everything we can to help out. Yeah. And, I mean, it's it's a little bit different than it is in Eastern Kansas. It is, we, we all have a lot of the same challenges and yeah. needs and 
and so we all we all do work together out here and yeah. so it, it's good to have people to bounce stuff off of and share ideas and talk to others what's and, working what they learned you know and something, they went something comes up you have somebody who you can trust will give you an honest opinion and yeah. tell you either you know this is a great idea or no you here's what you got to look for because somebody's going to try to do this to your organization yeah. or, something. or go check with these guys because they walked through this and they can tell yep. you some of the, the pitfalls that it is. And we do get more phone calls now because we do do some of the stuff that other people don't do. So yes, yeah. we do get calls and people. Well, I know I've referenced a few people out here to you guys to talk yeah. to, um, just because you guys are doing things well and, and are aren't willing to to shy away from some things. So that's good. Um, who are some of your natural partners? I think you guys here get them done a good job, but maybe you need to think even broader out in the county. You know, who else are some people that you know that, that you could be partnering with to bring some other projects or some other ideas? As you look at the wellness center. Where else can you go for funding and, and grants and and I, I don't know if you guys are looking at tax credits. Or well, they're going to do a bond issue block grants this fall. The bond issue. Yes, so we're going to be leaving that. Tax stay on. a little <laughs> neutral. Yeah. But stay as neutral as we can. But we do have a wellness fund, and we're, you know we've already offered whatever help we can, and yeah. as far as trying to alleviate some of the costs for the school district and stuff. So. So it'll be a school district project. Yes. I don't know if it'd be that in combination with the hospital or how that would work. Nope, it's all school. All school. But constant, constantly be thinking about who's our competition and how can we partner and collaborate. You know, we used to look at a lot of competition, but now we look at competition as who can we partner with. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're doing that well and they're competing with us, how can we work together to make it even better and even stronger? And how can we sit down and, and not overlap, but, but share services and, and, and work together? So um, I always like to flip competition over to, to collaborators and in, in, in what in our world um, I think it's always a better conversation but we do have to think about who's out there and who's doing what and then figure out how we can work with them because uh, in today's world and resources we've got to be doing that even more so than before um, thinking about some external questions as you sit on the board um, are we talking to the community? Do, do we know what they need? Have we had some community forums and some community meetings? Do we really know? Are there some other needs and wants out there that maybe the community wants or would like to at least get on the, the agenda for discussion down the road? Um, do we, we really know the community needs? We are do. there other issues out there? We do Public Square here. Oh, they, okay. they started that yeah. uh, two years ago. And okay. so wellness center, housing, and Talk, assisted yeah. living for um, elderly that's yeah. those are the big issues and so yeah. and it sounds like child care probably mm -hmm. a little bit it's next on my agenda Brinley just doesn't know it yet <laughs> I'm sorry She'll find out when she sees it no we <laughs> there there's some things we're gonna look at doing with you know there's possibilities out there and so that's probably our next big project is now that we have applied for a few grants and things that yeah there's some money out there we could possibly go get and help out, but the main problem is finding someone to actually run mm -hmm. the daycare center and yeah, and staffing. You know, you you can find the places and everything for it, but actually finding the people who could run it is yeah. the main issue we f probably face out here. And, and then circle back to housing. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And then keeping it affordable enough that the the working parents can afford the child care is the other. Mm -hmm. yeah. Issue that, that we run into across the state is making it affordable enough that they can afford to work and, and use the job there. Norton's opening one up. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? And, yeah, and yeah. I don't know, they've got kind of an interesting model, and I don't know all the, the details and works of it, but they're getting ready. I think it's, is it Norton or Phillipsburg? Mm, I don't know. I talked to Scott a little bit about what they were doing, what they're doing up there. One and of them up there. I'm now confused. I'm not sure. One of those two counties is doing a community, kind mm -hmm. of a community child care. And I can't but he was tell I, I assumed it was Norton because he was the one telling me about it. But yeah, but it could have been Phelpsburg now that I think about it. It might have been. I, I didn't. I didn't get the details. Like he just yeah, and I, I didn't like he like he talked about it a little bit, but I don't remember specifically. But they are doing a community kind of a childcare thing that might be a model you guys could look at or think mm -hmm. about. That, that might work. I don't know. It might be just a conversation. And we'll ask actually ask the questions and find out where it is. Well, and uh, in talking to Scott a little bit, you know. Yeah. Yes. I I got a general idea of how they're going to make it work up okay. there. So yeah. Hopefully it'll be okay. Yeah, it'll be interesting to watch. And if it does, I think that it will be a good model for some other communities. Um, mm -hmm. It puts some thought into it. 
What are the opportunities, what are the dangers in our community, in, in Scott County? What are things that aren't, that are kind of underutilized? What are some things you could really capitalize on and do better as a county, as a community? Um, and what are the dangers? What are some of the things that are coming up? I know, you know, and we're hearing a lot more, it used to be meth was the big thing, and now it's the opiates that, that are really a big concern and care. And I know you've got the facility, but, you know, think about what are some of those dangers and what are some of those things that are going to be coming down the pike in a couple of years that you're going to have to be thinking about and, and figuring out what to do with. But also think about what do we have here and what can we build on and what, we ca what can we capitalize on. What is an under underused asset in the community that we could or should be doing something with? Thoughts on that? Anything? On either one of those? We, we kind of touch on most everything. I think, honestly, our biggest deficit is the wellness center. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's our biggest efficiency. Yeah. Is mm -hmm. we, you know, you look at other communities, like in, you know, yeah. you look at Ulysses, you look at all these other different, Poison. they, you know, they have facilities. That wellness piece. Yeah, Goodland's got their arena. Colby's got the downtown basketball or you know. Yeah. It, we, we don't have anything that, gives us the ability to conduct a recreational program efficiently you know there's yeah. not enough gym space to where i know my wife is our they're moving the christmas program to like the second week of november just so it doesn't because oh, you can't have can't practice the there's not enough gym space yeah. so you're now your christmas program is now going to be in november because she's like, well, what? And that she's just like, well, we could just do this, and that way you don't have the practice. Because it, if if you have three nights of a, you know, yeah. you, there's so, there's no place to where parents and grandparents can come. They have to have so many different nights and yeah. split it all mm -hmm. up. Yeah. So, you know, it's there's no gym space to where they can actually have a big gathering. Yeah. It's just. It's a, it's a nightmare. Yeah, I have, I have three boys that are three years apart. The one year we had to go to three different Christmas programs. Yeah. So like, in fact, we did that for about three years. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love them, but <laughs> there's a lot, yep. of, a lot of things for them. Christmas program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that does make a difference. That, is, that will make a difference. So, is there a plan? Is there a written plan? Is there a plan in Ryan's brain, or is there a written no, plan? No, we have, we have a strategic plan. Have plan um, we're yeah. we're going to have, and it's something we're going to have a board retreat this year. Good. I think we've grown enough, and we're getting big enough that we need to have. We're going to need to have a board retreat and sit down and come up with some strategic ideas on where we need to go. We we've done so much, but what um, there's more. There's always more. There is, you know. Like our last goals were holding, you know, getting a holding company set up. Yeah. Um, we, we've got that done. Our marketing plan, you know, we've we've done a very good job of getting the marketing to where it needs to be and getting the message out in the community. Now yeah. we need to we need to start thinking long term um, and how. Well, we, think about what should the new message be. Yeah, exactly. What, what's the new message? The, probably the old message is old. So what's the new message? And maybe it is that you know we pumped six million in plus eight million. You know. What is that message? And, and you know, kind of think about that, that what that could be. Um, and I would strongly suggest that, that you, if your committees aren't invited to the retreat, at least part of it, mm -hmm. um, at least make sure the committees are doing many retreats before that, so that that, that information, because that will just broaden and strengthen that plan a little bit. But you know, you could have the, the committees come for part of it, and then take that that conversation, those ideas, and then the board fine tune it. Mm -hmm. um, because those are things that never happen at board meetings. So you really, you know, I know retreats are kind of a pain in the butt sometimes, but they really are. They really do help because you just don't have time at board meetings to do some of that stuff. Keep sure you make sure you keep the plan in the forefront. Um, there's nothing more frustrating than for me than to find out organizations have plans and then they don't know what they are. Mm -hmm. You know, they spend all the time and energy on putting that plan together and then it just goes and sits on the shelf. So, you know, and here again, I don't think you need a big, strong, thick notebook. I think you need, you know five or six pages of really where you're going, what you're doing, and some, some budgeting and some timelines and some who's going to move the project forward kind of piece. Mm -hmm. As you move into that project, you can get a lot more detail and have a lot more insight, but you've got to have that, that plan and that vision laid out. Think about your case, and, and a little bit of what come out of that retreat, but part of it you can be thinking about that now is what is your message? You know, what are you telling the public right now? What do you want the public to know about you as an organization and as an individual? You know, as an individual board member, what do you want the community to know about the community foundation and why you're involved 
And as an organization, what's that message? Um, same thing about why are you worthy? Why should they be giving money to you instead of giving money to K-State or KU? Mm -hmm. what, what's the benefit? And, and not that you don't want him to give money there, but, but why? Why is Scott County Community Foundation? And if, if people ask you, what would you say? You know, think about that here again as an individual and as a board member. Why should people support the Community Foundation? Um, talk about your organization. We talked a little bit about that. Talk about those accomplishments and talk about where you're going. It's good to talk about the history, the past, what you've done, but it's also good to show them that you're not just resting on your morals, that you've got more to do and more to accomplish, and talk about how they can be a partner in that, how they can invest, and how they can be a partner and they can be a part of that success. Talk about how this is where the Community Foundation Board and Organization, but they're always open to ideas and, and those philanthropic dreams that other people have, so encourage them to bring those to the table as well. But both as, as, as individuals and as organizational, those are some things to think about. I want to talk just a little bit about donors here, but people get involved in organizations for a lot of different reasons. So as you think about that, does one of those kind of reflect, one or two kind of reflect why you're, why you're there? Anybody mm -hmm. care to say the why? Which one of them? Build community and giving back, probably. Yeah, the communitarian, yeah. Mm -hmm. Socialite, I always say everybody needs a good party planner. Every nonprofit needs a, a party planner. <laughs> Gotta have somebody yeah. out there throwing those bashes and having all the good food and the good drink and the, the parties going on for us. So we need those we need those too. But as you think about why people get involved and why people give, um, it kind of helps to understand if you know a little bit or at least think you know or talk to them about why. Um, which one of those they fit in, because it kind of helps your approach and what your message might be. You know, if they're really into helping the community, it's a different story than if they're really into doing it because they're devout, um, or if they're a socialite. If it's the social thing to do, it's a different approach when you talk to them about getting engaged and involved. Um, if it's a family tradition, it's a different conversation. You know, it, we're blessed with a lot of uh, multi-generation volunteers. Um, I know a lot of people complain because the, the young ones, the millennials, aren't good volunteers, um, but. I've seen a lot of great millennials involved in, in projects and going and doing and, and living in a college town for so many millennials. Um, my God, Lawrence wouldn't be what it is without the college kids doing the good volunteer work they do. Now, they celebrate it on Friday and Saturday. <laughs> the street. Then they clean um, it up on Sunday. That's right. They're out there doing their uh, community service on Sunday. No. <laughs> and Manhattan is no different than that. Yeah, you know, but. But I mean, but we do have a lot of good volunteers and a lot of good people. Mm -hmm. And I say, once you kind of understand why people volunteer or why they support organizations, mm -hmm. that message and, and why and how you talk to them changes up a little bit. Uh, know, know who you should be talking to. Um, you want to talk to your donors. You want to talk to friends. You know, a lot of times it's harder to talk to friends and family about supporting and going and doing. Um, I have, I've always, I trained a lot of volunteers, and sometimes I'll go, well, I'll ask anybody but my, but my family. Mm -hmm. You know, get somebody else going and talk to our family. I don't want to do that. Uh, make sure your community leaders, your your elected officials, as well as as some of your others, really um, know who you are and what you are. The Ministerial Alliance is a good group. Do you guys work much with them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're a good group because they've really got the beat and the pulse of, of where some of the community needs and wants are. And they, they, they also have a different circle of influence of who they can help make, make, make things happen a lot of different times. Um, social service agencies. Um, do you guys pull those, the nonprofits together much and work with them? I mean, we have some nonprofit funds. Mm -hmm. um, it just depends. Uh, they. It just depends on the organization and what they want and desire. Um, yeah. We work. We, we have a hospital fund now, we have Western Kansas Child Advocacy Center fund, we yeah. have, we do the things, but it's more of we kind of let them decide what they want and then if we can help, we try. Yeah. It's, they're a little more hands off. Anything, than, yeah. Yeah, they have their own agendas and things they want to do, yeah. so we help when we can. Uh, make sure we're keeping our donors informed and, and uh, close and, and educated. Um, I always say if you're doing news releases and, and doing stories out or doing things in the paper or the media, mm -hmm. those should all go to your donors and to your board members before mm -hmm. they hit the media. So mm -hmm. when you send it out to the media, make sure that that gets emailed out to your donors, your key donors, as well as to your board members and staff because those are often overlooked audiences that read about it in the paper and then they get asked and they're like, yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So make sure we get it out. Um, donors, family, 
different groups that we need to think about who, who we want to talk to and what we want to do. So as you talk about and think about your story, what is your story? You know, if you had to get up and do a five or ten minute presentation on the community foundation to a group, or I asked you to come in and speak, what would you say? What would you do? You know, what what is your story? What is your family story? What is your what is your piece? What brings you to the table? And and you know, my story would be different than Ryan's, as as well as everybody in the rooms would be different. None of them are wrong. Uh, we're all there for different reasons, and we all bring different different uh, history with us. Um, think about the seven faces. Here again, come back to thinking about why they might be involved or why, where that might come from. Um, what are you trying to accomplish? As you tell your story, what do you want to accomplish? And here again, that's going to vary from person or to person or group to group. Uh, but think about what are you trying to educate or what do you want that person to do? Do you just want to tell them a little bit more? Do you want them to get involved on a committee? Do you want them to be on the board? Do you want them to make a gift? Do you want them to think about an estate gift? Um, it's important to be honest and to be yourself. Um, in, in today's world, that honesty and that transparency thing is, is um, equally um, important, and it's probably more important than it's ever been before. Um, it, it's hard to come back and rebuild that trust if we're not honest on the front side. Constantly be listening and adapting to what you're hearing and the questions they're asking. Um, a lot of times we come in and we have kind of a preset thing we want to do, but that conversation, especially when you're talking about donors and projects, those conversations can go a totally different path. So we kind of have to listen and adapt very quickly and, and move forward, go the other direction. Um, I don't know how many times I've sat down with a donor and had a project I thought was perfect for them, and they'll go off on something else. And you know, we, we can make that happen for them and make it work, but this one over here had no interest for them that day or, or maybe forever. Um, you know, but they had something else burning in their mind. So mm -hmm. we've got to be that adapting, hearing what they're saying. So let's think. We okay, we've thought about some questions. We've got some answers. We've, we've kind of thought a little bit about our involvement, our engagement, our future, and, and what we're trying to accomplish as a board and as an individual board member. Um, you got to do it, you know, and, and I know it's hard. I know everybody's busy and everybody's got a life, but we really have to think about, hey, I committed to being on the board. Mm -hmm. I am going to be on the board, so what does Ryan and the staff need me to do? What's my role? What did I commit to do? And I think the big thing really is, is you know, it's, it's like we've talked, it's, it's that storytelling and, and networking. But it's really being engaged, being coming to the board meetings, being a good board member, being prepared, being on the committees, being on time, you know, showing up, mm -hmm. uh, both mentally and physically. Um, as a staff person, I know it's tough when you know when, when you've got people and they're doing everything else, but but being where they where they could or should be. And it's important. It's important work. You guys have a big job, a big responsibility. Uh, network whenever possible. You know, as I say, I, I don't think. You know, you don't want to hound them and beat them up to death, and that's all you talk about because there's other things going on. But, but it's important also to talk and make sure you're relating to the community foundation and the opportunity and the conversations there. You know, guys, have you thought about the community foundation? Have you talked to Ryan the community foundation to see if maybe that could be a piece? You know, that you don't have to know everything or have all the insight. You just have to know Ryan and, and you know, shoot him to Ryan and Ryan can figure it out. That's why he gets the big bucks, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's why he's got that cell phone that he's with all the time. Mm -hmm. but, you know, you just have to know that hey, that's a great idea. Run it by the run it by Brian and see maybe that's something we could take on the community foundation and go forward with. Let's sit down and have that conversation. That's really as a board member, that's the key stuff. You don't need to know <coughs> a lot of the, the stuff. So as you talk about who you need to tell the story with, um, board members. I, I'm always amazed and amused how sometimes board members don't always know and understand what's going on and where it's at and, and what's going on, and they're afraid to ask questions in groups. So we, we constantly have to tell the story to the board members and make sure that they're involved and engaged, know what's going on. Um, our volunteers and donors, um, I, and I don't know what kind of donor communications you guys are doing now. Have you got a pretty solid donor yeah. communication plan? Uh, yeah, we're up to the next step where it's going to be tracking and doing more of the donor tracking and getting everything set up to where we need to be, but okay. we do a pretty good job of... Uh, what database are you guys using? We just still use GiftWorks. Okay. They have a system in there that we're going to... It's it's like a updated version or something that we can buy that we'll start doing more donor tracking and things like okay. that. Okay. But, yeah, we do a pretty good job of maintaining okay. communications and stuff. The one thing we know with our donors is that if we don't engage and keep them involved and keep communications mm -hmm. and keep them, giving them reasons to stay engaged, then we lose them. Mm -hmm. We know that donors are not giving to as many organizations as they used to give to. A lot of them are giving more money, but they're giving to fewer organizations. Mm -hmm. um, and there's now currently, I think it's like 1.7 million nonprofits in the United States. So there's lots of opportunities. Yeah. 
So it's important that they know and understand, you know, who we're doing. Um, and businesses, foundations, corporations, let them know too. Um, let let the community, the business community, know as well who you are and what you are. That's often here again. I know you've got business owners and, and companies involved, but you know, make sure you're, you're relating it to their employees as well as to the companies of, of kind of what's going on in some of that. That's an area we don't uh, we don't focus on enough sometimes. Uh, I talked quite a bit about funders, elected officials. Do you guys sit down with your elected officials? And I know you work with them on projects. Mm, usually, when it's um, mostly projects, but. I see most of them, you yeah. know, members of the county commission or city council. I see mm -hmm. them all the time and talk to them. And yeah. They usually ask, or they'll they'll bring it. Don't worry, they'll bring it up. If there's something they, yeah. hey, could you could you help them out with this? Or so and so is looking for that. Could you help them out? And yeah. Yeah, that's. But here again, relay your your accomplishments and some of your mm -hmm. successes and some of the projects. You know, make sure that you're getting. They're asking, but make sure you're giving them information as well. Mm -hmm. uh, professional advisors. What are you guys doing with that group now? Are you working much with them? Nope. Nope. That's probably the toughest group, to be honest, to work with. Um, most of the accountants. Uh, I mean, we Wasserman out of Salina comes and does yeah. a, did an estate planning uh, yeah. a couple months ago, but good. as far as did you get a good crowd? Yeah. There's good. how many do we have? About 25, 30. Oh, that's good. Um, but as far as around here, the advisors, they're not too, you know, that. They they push, they know about it and they push whenever it's right. We get yeah, um, we get some help every now and then, but yeah. they don't. We don't have to educate them because they do our payroll and our audits, and yeah, it's kind of one of those things where eh, you know. But like Edward Jones, they really don't. They can't do anything. But uh, Schwab across Craig Richards helps us out a lot. He actually holds some of our money as yeah. far as wealth management but he also sends people our way and um, do you guys let the financial advisors retain the investment if they want to yeah yep you guys are you familiar with that say that again the so, financial advisors retain oh and do their own well like say like we had an instance Craig uh, recommended someone um, coming over to us um, but they're they have accounts with Schwab so if and when that does transfer, um, we're going to just have Craig manage it underneath the Schwab accounts that we currently have. So it, it used to be that financial advisors were not real keen on recommending community foundation gifts to their to their clients because they would lose that asset. Yeah. yeah, they'd lose the asset. And they're like, well, that's kind of a yeah. bad idea. Yeah. So uh, community foundations now are saying, okay, if, if if you have a client and they want to put money in the community foundation, we agree to reinvest that money and keep that money with you, mm -hmm. so you don't lose the asset. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, we're your client now instead of instead of the donor as mm -hmm. the client. Mm -hmm. So that's a real plus, and and a lot of people don't realize and understand. And it's it's a win win for the donor because they've got confidence and faith in that investor, mm -hmm. and it's a plus for the for the investor because they can maintain that in their asset base, and then you know the community foundation is making the same return. So it, you know whether they put it with them or somebody else, it's going to be pretty equal. So um, it's a good it was a good smart move in the community foundation world, but it took a while for people to figure that one out. Mm -hmm. uh, I see that. They, I've always been on board. Hey, yeah. no problem for us. And our investment committee actually did a very good job a few years ago of outlining, you know, coming up with that, you know, How that policy and yeah. saying, sure, if they want to keep it, no problem. Doesn't yeah. bother us at all. Yeah. And and we've expanded our money managers and stuff. And that's part of the reason we like having somebody local is because if they do, you know, yeah, it, they they make that referral. It's it's easy for them to keep the money and us to keep the money, and it all stays in the same. And, Win -win. It is. I would think about though about you guys just putting together a letter and just talking about what you've done the last however many years you want to go back and, and shooting it out to some of these people mm -hmm. and just you know have it come from the board chair and go hey I just want you to know kind of where the community you know at the end of your fiscal year would be a good time to do that but shoot it out to some of these different groups and the advisors and you know some mm -hmm. different different entities and just kind of let them know hey you know this is this is what we've been doing in the community and we look forward to future projects and future growth in Scott Camp you know those kinds of things. But because of, of the community, these are things we've been able to accomplish. Because um, here again, people know you're doing things, but I bet they'd be shocked to hear the numbers. Mm -hmm. 
in that $6 million figure. I think that will shock the community to realize what you've done there. Mm -hmm. And the generosity. Uh, everybody should be telling the story. It's not a staff thing. It's not just a, a board thing. It's everybody. I mean, the story gets told because we're all in different circles and we're all in different groups and we're all at different opportunities to bring that up. Um, and, and donors are some of your best storytellers. You know, don't, don't forget some of your donors. Don't forget some of your past board members. You know, just because they're not on the board anymore doesn't mean that they still can't have a purpose and a role. Um, and, we, you know, they were on the board and they were committed and they were volunteers and they were good. So, you know, keep those people engaged and involved and, and informed. Make sure they're also being informed as well as we go along. But, um, you know, the nonprofits that you grant support grants to, when they, when they publicize how they're spending that money, they should make sure they talk about where that money comes from. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you include that in your process. Yeah, um, it's the, part of our marketing plan. That was good. what we've updated as far as making sure that any gifts we have is there's some type of recognition or some type of plan as far as recognition within the uh, gift. Good. Because a lot of times we talk about programs, but we don't talk about where the dollars came from. Mm -hmm. And it's important for the donor, but also for the community foundation, to know that those funds came through the community foundation because of donor X mm -hmm. or because of community funds or whatever the purpose was. You know, in Kansas, we're not real good about bragging. We're not real good about boasting sometimes, but these are times it's okay. And no, it's, and that was one of the hardest things that. I had to learn because it was yeah. like, you know, yeah. we'd give all this money out and, you know, you, you, it, it's hard to say, yeah, hey, the community foundation yeah. did all this. Hey, look at us and we're doing all that. And it's like, well, you know, we really need to let them, you know, it's their project, you know. It, so that was one of the things I need to learn. It's okay to say it's okay. the but foundation. We had a piece it, of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, and so that was the hardest part for me, actually, as a director. It was saying it's okay to it's okay to say, oh yeah. Yeah, because it's the only way people know. It's, and, it's and really, they, you talk about it more as education as opposed to bragging, which really you're just educating people how and mm -hmm. how they can get involved and give back and go and do and you know. And you can always talk about because of the generous job, generosity of the donors <clears> and the supporters of the community to the community foundation, we were able to do X. You know, so talk about the community foundation here and being that catalyst or that tool. Um, yeah, it is hard. It mm -hmm. is hard, but it's it's a necessary thing to happen. I thought it was interesting at the senior awards the other night, and just the um, the what do I want to say? The the people who aren't really of Scott City, but they have some business in Scott City, so they want to be a part oh, of yeah. That. But just some of the stories that they told about how phenomenal Scott City's support is of that. And I thought coming from people like that who see other places and then they come and say, wow, this yeah. is awesome. And you have a whole, you know, auditorium full of people going, yeah, this is awesome. And a lot yeah. of it's because of the foundation. Yeah, that is pretty sweet. So it's, it's kind of neat when somebody comes from the outside and says, yeah, this is not everywhere, people. No. Yeah, and it's not. We're, I guarantee you, it's yeah. not. crisscrossing the state like I do. It's right. not. Right. <laughs> yeah, we're it, special. We need yeah. to keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. And keep building on that. Yeah. Um, people, when you tell the story, want they, they, the numbers are great, but they really don't care about the numbers and stats. They really want to know that individual, that mm -hmm. person, that that cause that you changed, that you made a difference. Um, you know, the, the drug and rehab center, they want to know a couple people that have really lives have changed because that yes. facility is there. Yes. It's not that you've served 89 people. It's that, mm -hmm. you know, who's that one or two people that you can kind of tell that story about? Mm -hmm. um, that's really what they're interested in. It's the, the stats are important because you've got to show the quantity and that you're doing things and it's not just one or two people. But it's really that personal story when you break it down to that one person or that one kiddo or that one family that, that has a better quality of life because of something the community foundation has done. Um, it's important too not to ramble. Keep it quick. Keep it short. Keep it brief. You know we've all um, sat through. God love President Weefald when we were there. When I was at K State, great speaker. But man, if he got off on a topic, and especially if he get into, got into history, you know he was going to go forever and ever. And any speech we wrote for him was totally out the window. I mean, you know, it was just getting team. But it's important, you know, to know who your audience is and kind of keep it clear, concise, and kind of keep it to the point. But. He did a lot of great things, but man, if he got a history notion in his mind when he was speaking, <laughs> it was, we were gone. But I'm sure you guys saw that out there with him a few times when he was at this one. Mm -hmm. um, I remember one time he started off on monarch butterflies. It's like, really? <laughs> 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 yeah, 40 minutes on monarch butterflies oh. in there one night. <laughs> um, so kind of know your message and stick to it. Keep it going. Um, 
I'm not big on expensive materials. I think there's a lot of things you can do, and, and I'm not a big one on it at all, but I think there's a lot of things and ways you can acknowledge and educate and tell your story and get people engaged and involved. And, uh, some, some work at different times, and, and I think you just kind of have to know what's there. Uh, in fact, most donors don't want a lot of kudos and recognition and credit. Yeah. Um, they need them sometimes, and, and they'll tell you they don't want them, but sometimes we need to do them anyway um, because they are important and they do help promote and encourage other people. I was working with a guy at K-State that um, absolutely did not want his name on the building um, for a variety of reasons, and it was like, you know, we need your name on that building because it's going to help encourage others. Mm -hmm. And that was finally the piece that flipped him over was it's not... It, it, it's not that his name out, you know, it wasn't, he didn't need it or want it, he clearly didn't, but it, his support and his endorsement and his commitment and his place in the industry made a difference and we just needed that name on there. And he made the gift to make it doable, you know, so sometimes you have to kind of convince, kind of like bragging, sometimes you have to convince people it's okay to do that, but we, we need to think about how we're, we're recognizing and telling the story and make sure they reflect and reflect back to the community and to the organization. I've seen some really cool materials. Um, there's a children's group that does a really cute thank you card with, um, they get the little kiddos to do hand paints mm -hmm. on just a little blank card and then they do all their thank you notes to their donors on those little cards. Or they'll get the kids just to draw little pictures on the note cards depending on you know, kind of what's going on. And, you know, so it reflects the children's organization that it is. So it just needs to kind of be a piece of that. Um, some information to be aware of that, that, that donors, that audiences need to think of. Um, people applaud achievement, they want to know what you're doing, they want to know that you're successful. People want to be part of success, success breeds more success. So you need to let them know that, that we're successful. But they also need to know that there are things that need to happen. And, you know, um, they give because there's needs. Um, they give because they have a need to give, but they also need to know that money is going to be used wisely and that those needs are going to be met that are out there. So. We need to talk about our past, we need to talk about our history, we need to talk about the vision, and I think we've talked about that. Uh, we need to show them that we've changed lives. We need to show them that, that we will take their money, we will invest it. Donors look at giving money now today as an investment, not so much as a donation. A lot of them look at it as an investment in their community, an investment in that organization, an investment in that project. So they look at giving a little bit differently because um, of, of how they make their gifts. So your website, I didn't go on it. I was going to go on it and I didn't. How's your website? Not it's under good. construction. Yeah, we're redoing it. Okay, good. Actually, currently in the making of the Starting over, so. Great. That was one of the things our marketing committee and we all kind of sat down and said. We need a new website. Well, we, we had redone it like back when we did the campaign a few years ago yeah. to kind of work together. Oh, get, I haven't done it until this since then. You know, it's been about four years since yeah. we've updated it, and so we want to get more new and flashy and. Yeah, be able it's to, so much quicker and easier to do now. They're much easier to update and change and keep up with Yeah, there's no core codes that you got to yeah. re enter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're so much easier. But think about it, I'm sure you're doing a lot of this, but you know, websites, we all pull them up on the smartphone. You know, it's got to be got to be quick, easy. Yeah, they're trying to get it mobile friendly and stuff too. So. Yeah. <coughs> um, you can donate now on yours. You have to give now PayPal or something. Yeah. Yeah, they do PayPal. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, we just had to work on that. It's important, it's what donors do of all ages. Um, it's not just the young kids that are doing the, the online mm -hmm. giving. We know that the older population are, are, are online more so than even the younger kids somewhat, and they're giving as much online. It's still not a large percentage of giving, it's about 10 or 11% of the, the total pro nonprofit um, private dollars that have been given are coming in online, but those mm -hmm. numbers are going up every year. And it's crazy out here, I think we're less than like one to 2% yeah. for online. It's yeah. just, it, it, it's, yeah. it's just not, not it's not a big thing yet. People like you to come talk to them and they want to hear the story and they yeah. want to... Did they write out a check? Yes. Yeah. Then yeah. they come in and they write me a check and then life's good. Mm -hmm. But they they want that... That one on They still want the personal touch yeah. mm -hmm. here. And I think that's great. I mean, I, I, no, it, I think you do better and have a better story and have a better long-term mm -hmm. relationship. I think mm -hmm. online giving is good for, for little small gifts, but I think for long-term relationships, online giving is not... It's yeah, I think it's just the smaller community thing. I yeah. think you yeah. know, you go to the big city, you got to have, you oh, have yeah. to have the web page, and you have to have yeah. the, because yeah. 
because th it's just a whole different. But when quality. you think of people that don't live in Scott County That's that want to give and support mm -hmm. Act, you've got to have a good, vibrant, active web page. I'm hoping like the online giving will maybe reach some of the people that um, <clears throat> lived here and moved away but still have that personal connection. Yeah. You know? For your alumni, if they come back and yeah. they're doing something. Well, and the whole hope is to actually, you know, we still do paper and we still do, we're, we're transitioning to the paperless so that we can then target those who don't live here and make it easy yeah. for them to go. Hopefully it'll be easier on our new website. Yeah. yeah, just to make it more efficient is what we're doing at this point. Yeah. Streamlining the process. Uh, and the only thing I cost you on the website is make sure you, once you get it up is keep it current. Keep it flexible yeah. enough that you can keep it current and up to date because there's nothing more irritating. I mean, and here again, think about your use on the websites and when you go on websites and when do you get hacked and move off, you mm -hmm. know? So make sure yours, you go you back know. two months later and mm -hmm. same things. Like back yeah, I'm not, okay, I'm not giving to that organization if they can't yeah. be conformed mm -hmm. enough today. Yeah. Because yeah. Um, yeah. we know that people are using that as a, as a resource. But think about as you design the website what people like, you know, what you and your cohorts and your people, how quick it has to pull up, how quick it, you have to be able to find it, how easy it is to maneuver, you know, all those things, and especially on the smartphones and, you know, not just your laptops and your computers. That's the, the important thing. Because, you know, they, they're saying on, on PayPal and online giving, if it's more than two clicks, people will move off the site and, and go forget it. So, mm -hmm. you know, they say put that donate button on every page. Don't just put it on one page, put it on every page. So on every page they can click and go directly to on how to do online. Because they don't want to be doing something over here and then have to go, okay, where was that online giving piece? It was on here somewhere or another. So. Yeah, and the main thing right now I would say our web page is used for is to get like our scholarship and grant applications. Mm -hmm. And I foresee that to continue to be the same. Yeah, but that's good because it's wrong forcing people over there. You guys did a promo though a couple years ago that forced nonprofits on there. Was it a giving day or something? No. What are you doing? It was a couple of years ago. You guys did something that worked forcing people. They had to go on the website to do something. I don't remember what it was. Pam, do you remember what that was? No. no I'm trying to remember. It was, a, it was some kind of a match program or a giving program or something. I don't remember, but I remember talking about it with you guys, and, and I know you did it. I just don't remember. Or it was a competition. Competition or something. I don't remember the details, but it was it was really good because it was forcing people to go to the website. Um, no, we had voting we, for something. Was yeah. it Women oh. for Women Fund or? I, I don't no, know. we did. We had a vote. Yeah, for, for you did for grants or what was? Yes, it, it was to uh, give away some money, and you had to go. That's right. Did they have to choose ago. a fund? Oh gosh, it was a little. Was yeah. it more than two years ago? Okay. Yeah, it was they, probably longer it was, than I think. I think it was before you guys. I was going to say, I don't know. I don't have kids in high school, so I forget when things happen. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> okay, Gray was this age when that mm -hmm. happened, and now they're out of my house, so I can't keep track of things that way. Anymore. Yeah, I remember doing that. Yeah. But that might be an idea when you get your website back up. Well, and what we do now, kind of, to, because we have our, an, our annual donor dinner and yeah. things like that, but. During that, we actually have a pool of money where we raffle it off, and the winners get to give away or choose a charity. Oh, okay. So that kind of took the yeah. place of, of that one. Oh. Of that whole process. Well, maybe you could do two, do split it, and go either yeah. way or something. Just yeah. to get, I mean, just once you get the website, well, yeah. you have to draw some traffic to yeah. it in order to promote the website. Yeah. Um, yeah, we. I think we did it on Facebook, is what we did. Yeah. It was you got on the yeah, link you back to the web page. Yeah. And then you clicked over. Uh -huh. and yeah, but I, I thought it was good at the time. We, I know it was you had to a lot get, of traffic. It was to get people to sign up and be our friends on Facebook is what it was now. Oh, that was the ultimate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the money was just the Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we gave away like five hundred bucks. You don't have a community foundation app, do you? No. That seems to be the new thing is all the organizations are getting apps. <laughs> I have not quite figured the why yeah. or, or, or the, the whole process. I don't, I don't get it. You can get organizational apps now, which. No, it should be fine. Just link you back to the web. Yeah, 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 I guess. Yeah. I'm kind of baffled to buy them, but yeah. again, I'm not, not savvy on some of that. So. Everything's getting easier. simpler, probably, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the websites. I think the apps are easier to create. Yeah, so everybody needs to need an app or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit more on donors. Um, they want to be valued. Their, their opinion and their time, they want to be valued. Um, 
they have if they're going to invest, if they're going to give, they have to trust you, but they also have to feel passionate about what you're doing and what the project is. You know, you guys have a lot of projects, but some donors are going to buy into some, and some are not going to buy into others. Um, they want to make your dreams happen. Your dreams are good and, and wonderful, and, and it's great to have those community-wide projects, but also be talking to them about some of their dreams. And you know, the beauty of the community foundation is most of the times they can make things happen. Um, you know, they're, it's not like a K-State or a KU where you're limited. You can only it has to be affiliated with that foundation. You know, in a community, everything's a go. So, you know, if it's even a somewhat sane idea, you can make it happen if the donor's willing to fund it and it's within the guidelines. So, are you going to shoot me for saying that? No. <laughs> very rarely are my dreams part of their dreams. It's usually <laughs> their dream is uh, that... And they all have weird dreams. Uh, they do. They do. I think Brian's pretty good at I determine do. which donor would like it to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. to go for yeah. It. And that's yeah, that's great because he knows kind of who's out there and what's yeah. going on. But um, yeah, there's been some community foundations do some crazy things through the years, but they've been really good. The donors have been pleased, and as I say, at the end, it's turned out fairly well. But well, we're the donors make come with some crazy. Mm -hmm. But it's important to them, and usually it's important to others too. Right. So make it happen and make them happy. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. Yeah. Um, lots of things you can support through the Community Foundation. As I mentioned, there's really nothing that really can't be supported. Um, Ryan and I were talking earlier about, you know, some community foundations are limited to only 501c3 organizations, and you can't get to a C6 or a C17 or an 18 or whatever the other uh, numerous numbers are. Um, but, but you guys are pretty flexible, and, and you can really support just about any and everything. I, I don't know of anything absolutely... There might be some things you don't want to support for whatever reason as a board and as an organization, but um, I think everything's pretty much on the table unless there's some political or other reason that you would want to, you know, liability reason. But I think that's that's the beauty of, of you guys. And the, the fact that you're willing to do that. Some of them are so limited and restricted, they, the board is just so in a little, a little box where you guys are kind of out here. Uh, some of them are just very narrow, and uh, I think that's part of your success part of your growth is, is your openness. Um, think about all sorts of, of assets that people can give and will give and, and have given through the years. Um, you know, people always go, Betty, they're not giving land, and that is such bunk because people do give land away, you know. Mm -hmm. People are giving land away. Uh, probably about the only thing they're not giving away are water rights. Um, I don't see water rights given away. It's probably the only thing. Uh, not even in the other half of the state we don't see water rights, but but that's probably about the only thing. I've seen everything else given to community foundations and to um, the donors that come up with. And I always say, keep in mind that one person's um, treasure or trash is somebody else's treasure. Mm -hmm. So, you know, through the years, there's been a lot of really weird assets uh, that have been given. And I used to bring a lot of them in. Um, here, just sit there and challenge the account. What are you going to do with this asset today, David? Uh, what, what was it? A forklift? Yeah. Two years ago, yeah. we got yeah. a yeah. 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 skid loader, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then, I mean, it's... Five it grand. Hey, yeah. 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 Somebody needed a one. Somebody, yeah. 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 so, you know, we just keep pretty flexible on... Mm -hmm. You guys have a gift acceptance policy? Yep. Yeah, so... Yeah, we... Well, and that's part of the, the holding company is... The idea was when if you know say somebody wants to give a combine we have a place to stash it until we do sell it so yeah. that you're not just sitting on it and one of the things i'd like to do i have a you know i have all these ideas of fundraising things i want to do is just getting the time to actually do them is but yeah we i would like to actually do a farm auction here because there's not one in scott that would actually work for oh. the community foundation hmm. have uh, farmers and everybody come you know donate their and you used get equipment. Of it? No, we get all of it. You get all of it? Okay. Yeah, well, the, the auctioneer or whoever. Yeah, gets their cut. Get their cut, but I mean, basically be an auction for the community because there is no farm auction here. And no, there's not, not really there's one no. over in, they have the big one in <coughs> Garden and they have one over in Wichita County mm -hmm. and they have one over in Diamond, but we don't have a farm auction here. People would come. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, even if and that's just it. Even if we sell it, you know, ten thousand dollars, and we sell it for two, we still get two grand. Yeah, and they get yeah. a piece of equipment. They don't. That's what else right. are they going to do with it? Mm -hmm. And it, yeah, it, it makes them yeah. stop and think. So that's my next project that, 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 that I'm that's trying to. Clean. Well, there was, a, and it was a little bit of a different twist, but there was a community foundation down in um, <coughs> southern Kansas, um, more eastern, that the 
the older generation was retiring. It was a family farming operation, but they each owned their own equipment. So um, the, the senior guy donated all of his equipment to the community foundation, and they mm -hmm. held the auction, and then the fund was set up in mm -hmm. his name. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and the land and everything went on, but they all had their own equipment, but the land you know, stayed where it was. But he donated, I think it was close to $100,000 worth of equipment over to the community foundation. Mm -hmm. I think it's, well, I don't, maybe that's what they netted. I don't remember. Well, I mean, if you, if you just he donated get all the equipment, they set up a really one nice combine. One. And <laughs> yeah, it's probably somebody. more than that. Yeah. So. Depends on how old. Yeah. Well, that's insane. <laughs> Does it work? Ten-year-old <laughs> combine. Yeah. Get you a 50 but, grand. But, you know, it was a little bit different twist, but it went well, and, and they did they did fine down there. Mm -hmm. so. um, yeah, but, but always think about people, and, and, you know, in Kansas, we tend to be cash poor and asset rich. So mm -hmm. we do have to get creative on some of the assets. Um, one comment I will make is retirement accounts are usually the highest taxed asset that anybody has. Um, that money is not taxed when it goes into it. So when it comes out and you're doing estate planning, um, mm -hmm. retirement accounts will be taxed the highest. And, and usually it can be anywhere from 75 to 85, 5% 5 of the asset will go to, to the taxes. Mm -hmm. So well, as you think about it and you're working with people, if they have a retirement account, that's the one you want to play with for charitable giving is to get that asset out of there because that's where you're going to take the biggest hit. Um, so just as you work through that. Because it's not tax going in. The government's mm -hmm. going to get it somewhere, mm -hmm. somehow, and that's where they get you. So just a heads up on that one. Um, as I say, there's lots of assets and lots of opportunity. Uh, keep in mind that all gifts are important. It's not the size of the gift that makes the difference. Um, a lot of times people will give you that smaller gift to kind of see what you do and if, you, if you're trustworthy with it. Um, and then they'll give you a bigger one later on. And as I always say, some of the people that give smaller gifts, that's more important to them than the people that make the larger gifts because it's more of a financial commitment and more of a personal passion of things sometimes. I was doing a church campaign right before Christmas and a lady said, you know, she goes, I've looked at my budget and I've looked at my budget and this is what I can do. And, and you know, we weren't even in the asking stage. We were just kind of trying to figure out if we could do this campaign. But she had already, it was that important to her and that, and she was so committed to that project and that it was so fun to sit and listen and chat with her. And it wasn't a big gift, but to her it was everything. And it, it was one of the coolest gifts for that campaign that we saw come through. And then she came back when you were actually doing the action. She goes, well, she goes, I, did a little, I put a little bit more pencil to it, Betty. We can do a little bit more. <laughs> oh, how sweet. It was pretty, pretty funny. But that, you know, so it's not the size of the gift. It was, it was her, her commitment. It was her heart. Yeah, it was her emotion. Um, I think we've talked about building that case, and, and I'm not going to harp on that. Um, it's always important when you're talking with people is how they can get involved and what they can do and, and find out kind of what their niche and what their piece is and what would prompt them. Kind of listen and ask those questions of what, what part of what's going on in the community gets them. I mean, like you came in through the scholarship committee. Mm -hmm. and clearly, that was probably an important part of it. But, you know, what, what brought you into the community foundation? What would you like it? Uh, just the benefit. You know, just the benefit, just yeah. Grow up your own life. Yeah. So it was just given. It's always fun to find out. Kind of, you know, I always say, you know, if you had all the money in the world, what would you do in Scott County? What would you make? What would you bring? If money was no object, what would you do for Scott County? And that kind of starts helping you figure yeah. out, okay, is it health? Is it school? Is it, you know, social service agencies? Is it what piece of, of the communities? Is it the fence? You know, what piece? <laughs> is, that, is that person out there? It must be out there. <laughs> Make sure when you're talking that you keep it about them, and that's part of it comes back to that bragging. Talk about, with your help and what, with the help of our donors and because of the generosity of, of Scott County, we've been able to make these things happen through the Community Foundation. So you know, realize that it's not our dollars that is making it happen, it's the generosity. We're just that piece, that catalyst that makes it happen. Um, and a lot of times we get caught up in, oh, we, 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 and it's really not. Mm -hmm. We're just helping facilitate and helping move things through. And I'll wrap up here with just some tips. Um, come to the meetings, be prepared. I think we've talked about that. Um, kind of know what you want to say and you know, have that 60 second speech on the community foundation and what you would say. If somebody asked you at the track meet today about the community foundation, mm -hmm. what would you say? Mm -hmm. you know, kind of have that in your mind and kind of have a, on what works for you. And it's the same for everybody, it's, it's good. Um, determine what your role wants to be as a board member. What, you know, we talked about that a little bit. Um, what you would like to see happen, how your skills, and your assets, and, and your talents can, can help move the organization forward. 
Um, see the organization through other people's eyes. You know, you guys come to the board meetings and you hear the good, the bad, and the, the you know, what's going on, what's not, and the, the frustrations. But make sure that, that you see it through other people and, and kind of the good. And make sure we're telling other people so they can see it from us. Um, honesty, openness, I think those are, are standard. But in today's world, I think I have to keep hitting on those mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, make sure you've got good, solid information. If you don't know answers, if you don't know questions, go, you know, my God, that's a great idea. Let me, let me talk to Ryan. And that's a great question. I don't have an answer. Let me get back to the office staff. We'll figure out what that is. Um, it's always about them. It's not about us. Um, and, I, and I think to really be successful, that's important. It's, it's, we, it's, it's like he's saying, we're that, that opportunity for them to be doing what they want to do. That's our role. Um, be yourself. Don't, don't worry about telling it or doing it differently or trying to do the way Ryan does. Ryan brings a different perspective, so it's, it's what works. Uh, complaints into opportunities. Some of the best donors I've ever had are the ones that came in bagging and ragging and, and were just so mad and so irate or just so disagreeing on what we were trying to accomplish. But if you can sit down to them and talk to them and, and give them some just some background on why you're doing what you're doing and what you want to happen, people complain because they care. People complain because it matters to them. And if they can understand or if they can make a little bit of a change or if they can have some input, a lot of times people just want to be heard. And if you'll give them that courtesy, a lot of times uh, they'll be some of your best supporters at the end. Uh, keep the efforts multi-generational. You know, we, we always think we need to focus on the older generation because they, they have all the money and the wealth and, and the time and the energy, but uh, we've got to keep the whole community engaged up and down and, and keep everything we're doing multi-generational. We've got to think, you know, young and old as, as we go forward and everything we do. Um, create talking points. Ryan, did you guys, do you guys have those anymore? I know we have them for the campaign. Not specifically. There's, I mean, most of the time we haven't been involved in enough lately but now yeah, that we're back them. involved in more yeah. stuff in the last few months it, we kind of had a catch-up time and yeah. so but even like on the wellness project or mm -hmm. the bond issue it might be nice for the board to have talking points of where the, where the foundation is on the wellness center yeah. i mean you know those no, kind of you don't want to you don't want to take a side is that what you're thinking no well i mean we have a wellness fund so we probably should have some kind of stance that we have a yeah wellness it doesn't fund have to be pro or calm it just because you know we have a fund we're, we're supporting you know i mean yeah. it doesn't have to be a side but just this is what the foundation mm -hmm. we're here to help alleviate yeah. some of the costs for the taxpayer and, and it might be as simple as for the board to understand we are not taking a side and mm -hmm. this is why i mean you know that conversation but just to have on different projects and different things the foundation's involved in that's yeah. so as a board everybody's on the same page that's helpful sometimes um you guys can do it i think you know as i said you guys out here are a model a model group out here i think the biggest thing is to have a plan of some sort and constantly be working and moving forward and check things off that to-do list and have it both as an organization and as an individual i think that's that's the other big piece um, don't be afraid to delegate to bring other people in other skill sets you know a lot of times you can get people to come in and just serve on an ad hoc committee or provide some insight for an hour or two they don't they didn't, maybe don't want to be involved for the long term but they they can be a real resource if we've got the networks out there um, enjoy it have fun with it it's a great opportunity it's a great organization um, i think being a board member is a big responsibility but it's also a lot of fun and it's, it's extremely rewarding from the ones that i sit on and, and that i participate with um, I love this one. No one, no one of us can do as much as any number of us working together. And it does take that team and that effort of staff and volunteers and, and donors to really come together. And, and when we get that, that action going forward and everybody knows where we're going because we've got that focus and that plan, great things happen. So I'll, I'll wrap with that is what are you personally willing to commit as a board member to grow the community foundation? And here again, don't need an answer, but just think about what, what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want to say when you leave the board in a few years to say, wow, you know, I, I, this is something that was really important and, and passionate to me, and I'm glad we were able to make this happen, whatever that might be. That's what I have. How's that? Thank you. Very You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Betty, for coming out. And, oh, sure. Uh, it's always fun. I guess we can conclude and start having lunch. Uh, we, we will make copies for this for yeah. members. And I can shoot this out to you so you've got you can oh, email it. Okay. Yeah, that'd, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be like, great. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank Questions, you. comments. Is there anything that you're oh. open or, or questions oh. you have as a board member or what you should or shouldn't or on any front, whether it's... 
No, it's, it's good information. Yeah, it is. Get you excited. I mean, I think this is a piece that mi that we miss in just our regular board yeah, meetings. Just, just to be that. Of yeah, just to get outside of the the business. The yeah, the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And start making it a matter of the heart and of dreaming and of. Because yeah, yeah, you get into the board meetings and it's all okay. We got to get through the agenda because right. we got to yeah. go. Right. Exactly. Everyone has to go back yeah. to work. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's good. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to step back and stop. Mm -hmm. Well, look at it from the other side. Look at it from the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Why would Why would they support this? Why would they give to this? Why should we? What's the benefit? Yeah. Lots of questions to kind of think and ponder mm -hmm. and figure out. Okay. We'll get some pizza before it gets cold. Yeah. yeah. Get some pizza.